Microsoft is seeking to make searching for files much simpler, casual, and conversational. This, of course, lends itself to take already bad practices of file management and make it even worse. We're going to talk about this and the surrounding ideas in today's video. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we are going to have a look at another Windows Wednesday video, looking at some of the things that Windows is doing, and uh, talk about why I love Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. So we will go ahead and start in by saying this. One of the things I love most about Linux is that it gives you a lot of control. And even if your favorite distribution starts doing weird and stupid things, you have the freedom to jump to another distribution and have a very, very similar experience sans the nonsense that made you want to leave to begin with. Today, we do want to talk about cramming AI features in every nook and cranny of an operating system. And that is precisely what Windows is trying to do here. So we are going to start out with a tech radar article. This has to do with Windows uh, Smart AI. This is the Copilot Plus PCs, the same ones that take screenshots of everything your computer does and creates this nice searchable index for you. Now they are also going to be allowing you to simply talk about the type of file that you want to open and it will find the file for you. Now. Obviously, the one thing they're going on right now is this is all local. There's no cloud interactivity. And I honestly think now I don't have any evidence that they have some master plan, some Lex Luthor guy petting his kitty in the background going, yes, get on the system so we can collect all of your data. But what tends to happen inside of these systems is stuff will ultimately get put to the cloud. The cloud systems will ultimately get turned on and it can take a long time for this to happen. They started pushing OneDrive. It was called originally called SkyDrive on Windows 8.0. It's like, I get this nonsense out of here. And then 8.1 and you couldn't delete it anymore. And now it's so integrated into the system, they give you constant notification nags if you're not paying more money for it. And then in future subsequent updates, they turn it on and are automatically uploading your files to the drive. This is why we have a concern with an AI system that is not just filtering by what, for example, the title of some file is. They are actually scanning the content of that file as well, based on the things that we are going to see. Now, this to me is what leads me to think that the AI is going to increase the uh, rapid descent, maybe more rapid descent into the world of idiocracy. And, you know, you want a glass of water, they'll be like, from the toilet, you know. Uh, but... Uh, in this, uh, here's what they say. Microsoft is testing an AI-powered search feature for Windows 11 that promises to end the days of organizing and naming your files well to find them later. So we already have bad organization, many of us. And now we are seeking not to have some improvement, but to make it worse. Now, I, as I'm working on my desktop, things can get out of order. And then about once a month, I'll stop and go, okay, this desktop is a mess. I will sort, clean, organize. Things get moved into certain files. If it's destined for my backup drives, it goes to a certain file. If it's destined for something else, it goes somewhere else. Everything ultimately gets a file. Now, I started doing this long ago with the proliferation of MP3s. I had all of my music CDs and I started ripping those as the MP3s so I could listen to the files on my computer without putting the disc in the drive. Uh, perfectly legal in the United States. And what I started doing is I cataloged and got a very good system. I, I have inside my music folder, right? we have the artist name and then we have the album name and we have the track names and we have, have all the tracks. And of course we go in and we add the, the ID tag information. And there was a period of time I had to migrate my ID tags on a lot of my files from ID tag one to ID tag two. It's very simple in kid three, by the way, click of a button. But what ended up happening is I got this system that even if the MP3 player I had did not recognize ID tags and there were some lower end ones that didn't, I could still have perfectly find everything by doing simple folder hierarchy. Well, I do the same in my work. I have a folder for desktop, you know, like website clients. And then here's the name of the client. And then here is the date of the project. So everything is easy to find. and I can quickly find everything I need because I have a good organization system. Now, 
I think everybody should adopt some form of organization system. As I've always said, approaching your computers should be something you do with intentionality, not something that you do uh, just just haphazardly. And this is exactly what they are empowering, the haphazard lack of organization, lack of thinking. If they have your way, now you just dump all of your files, all just inside of the root of my documents. And then it's not even called my documents anymore, right? It's documents because they don't belong to you. They belong to Microsoft now, right? But this is how they start. It promises to end the days of organizing and naming your files well to find them later. Like, don't worry about organizing your files so you can find them later. You can just talk to the AI. Currently only available to testers with Copilot Plus PCs, new search tool uses semantic indexing to locate files with a conversational twist. So instead of racking your brain for precise file names... Do you really have to rack your brain for precise file names? I mean, picture of a cow. I do, what should I call this thing? I mean, I got it. I'm going to name this picture of a cow um, a photo of a rooster so I can find it later. <laughs> now, you don't need to rack your brain. Okay. If you, you can now type in casual queries like, where's the presentation I made last week? Well, you know, I can still find presentations I made like six weeks ago. Like, for example, if you follow my Christian channel, uh, if you didn't know we have a Christian channel, it's at Our Walk in Christ. So over there we do intense Bible studies. Not a huge channel because we don't cover all the cultural gossip. We actually don't open our Bible and read it. Well, I actually have a folder with all of these and the messages go here and they get organized by the book. And then the file name contains the, the book chapter and the, the verses we're covering. I mean, this is not difficult. And I can't remember if we did Zechariah 7 last week or two weeks ago or three weeks ago, but I know if I go into the folder of Zechariah, I can find it because I know what number seven is. So this presentation I made last week, well, what if it's next week? The presentation I made two weeks ago? Now you have to keep track of when did I make this presentation? Because in the following week, it's going to be what's the presentation I did three weeks ago? And they're like, which presentation did you make three weeks ago? They say, with any luck, the AI will find it. The feature works across settings, file explorer, explorer and the taskbar covering standard file formats, images, documents, and spreadsheets. It relies on built-in AI models. There's no need for an internet connection. That said, the search will only work on locations you've chosen to index, but you can index everything by switching to the new enhanced mode. They say that requires more trust in Microsoft than is comfortable. I don't trust Microsoft at all. I, I don't trust this. Okay. So, so for those who feel their digital lives are scattered across desktops, downloads, and who knows where, Organize your files better, folks. Organize your files better. That means you can, you, uh, let's see. So who knows where the feature is going to be helpful, even if it's limited to the computer for now. Now, right now, it does not work with your online files, but it will soon. They flagged that several times. We're working on that. We're going to have that. So pretty soon, the AI model is going to be able to search your cloud files, too. This is where that danger is. They get you in on the simplicity of finding that presentation you did last week. And then what they end up doing is they go back and they say, hey, um, here is the here's the files. Here's the indexing. How long before they take that information and they upload that to the cloud? Because it's got to be part of your backup. I mean, if this is all organized on your local system, what happens when you change your computer? You'll have to re-index everything again. I mean, that's too, too inconsistent. We got to take that file and put it in the cloud so you can cross sync that over because that's what we like to do. The other issue that I see with this article is tech articles. These tech journalists are no longer being journalists. They're being press releasers. Microsoft releases this issue and instead of examining this and questioning the various elements and all these types of features, instead they're just like, wow, look how amazing this is, hands on with Windows. It's so, so good. Windows search that doesn't suck. And then we get, oh, it's uh, it's it's more casual experience. It means you won't need to remember exactly what your files are called. These are all pro press releases. These aren't journal articles looking at the what are the pros and what are the cons. There's nothing in here that questions 
are they collecting more data? What about the the fact that Microsoft tends to grab more data and put it online? What about the fact that I may not want AI stuff? Now, obviously, this is tied to the Copilot Plus PCs. This is not going to be a feature on a regular PC, only the ones with a Copilot Plus on them. But that's what they're doing here. Here's this Windows search that doesn't suck. Use your own words. Search for documents and images using related words like budget spreadsheet or landscape. So this is where it knows what the file, the contents of the files are. That's how the AI works. It's using OCR. It's using some form of screen imaging to catalog and index things very much like the recall feature. This search function allows the AI to produce a form of database of the type of content on your system. This is, of course, the very same type of thing that leads to the controversial CSAM scanning, which sounds really good if you're talking about getting the evil, wicked pervert off the street, but sounds really bad when the authoritarian turnkey government says, okay, find everybody with a meme about Gavin Newsom. Okay. I mean, that's the, the fact of the matter is, man, this is, this is potentially dangerous stuff. And so... Uh, this article here just kind of goes into, once again, the positive press release. They talk about it's the NPU that's working. So you can see the CPU memory. It's the NPU that's working. Uh, they're doing this without the internet connection. So yes, this does work without internet. My concern is, can that indexable file be found online? And of course, our, our last uh, article here is the actual Windows blog talking about it. A little bit more sanitized, less, um, you know, less fluffy, but... Definitely all says the same thing. Here's use your own words. And then using your own words, search for an image uh, from your taskbar. So uh, you can just go ahead and uh, type in whatever you want. So this, uh, I want to see what this picture says at the bottom. So they did the search for eco-friendly clothing and we got this particular picture, I guess. Uh, best match for eco-friendly clothing, right? A person, like, you know, just because you're wearing your polyester clothes in the woods doesn't mean it's eco-friendly. Just going to point that one out too, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, here's, uh, you can, of course, use this also to change your theme. You know, was it ever hard to find where you change your themes, even with their little search features? But then uh, they have other AI features in here they're talking about as well. I just wanted to mention this. And this is where my, my concern with all this is, is it starts cramming these AI features. These AI features are working with, with backgrounds. They're creating some form of log of what's in the files, uh, or they're trying to do some real-time scanning of certain files. This is the type of stuff. This is client-side scanning. This is exactly what it is. This is dangerous. This is the type of stuff I don't want in my operating system, which is why I use Linux. And I tell people, if you have not yet used Linux, you should at least test it out. And the great news is you can try out Linux even without risking harm to your current computer. So uh, Linux Mint is where I recommend people start. Uh, I would use this. Uh, now, many people that use it say, this is all I want. I don't want to become a Linux aficionado. This system works perfectly fine. They stick with it forever. Other people will start with this, learn the kind of the basics, and then explore around and see which other distributions are. It doesn't matter which one you use, uh, but you do want to see what are the different features and options inside of Linux so that you can spot, you know, why might I use this instead of Fedora or Ubuntu or things like that. There's a little nuanced conversations that we do talk about on this channel. Now, how might you go ahead and try this out? You just go ahead and download, uh, download the distribution. And I'd recommend the Cinnamon edition for most people. There's uh, three different editions there. And then you're going to grab a file that is called an ISO file. That is a, a bootable file. Then you just need to create a bootable drive. So uh, in you can do this um, in Linux Mint, of course, it's very easy, but if you're already on something else, Windows, Mac, or Linux distributions, uh, you can use Etcher. So make sure you're grabbing this directly from their proper website. You can see at the very bottom of the screen, it's etcher.bolina.io. Uh, don't just do a search for Etcher and click the first link because this is one of the applications that's targeted by malvertisers. They take out ads for a fake version of this program. Grab it directly from this particular source, which is right here. Download it. And then once you have downloaded it, then what you can do 
Here is uh, your download links. You have the Windows. You have your Mac. Of course, this is for your uh, Intel Macs. This one is, pr I, it says ARM64. I think that's the Silicon Macs. Uh, I'd have to check into that. And then they have some Linux options as well. So you can download that. And then very simply, you just, uh, let me back up one more page. Just grab that image, put in a spare USB drive, and this will make the particular image. Now you just need to plug the drive into your computer and boot off of that drive, usually like an F2, an F9, an F11, an F12. We'll find a one-time boot menu. You can boot into it, and I would recommend don't just wipe out your Windows system. Just boot in and test it out. Play around with it. Nothing you do in there is going to be saved. And uh, you can get a chance to see what this looks like a little bit. And then you can follow some of our other online guides for how to install this either onto a different computer or onto your computer safely or onto an external USB drive. So then you can play around with Linux and save your results. Those are options for you as well. So in order to maintain control over your system and keep all this AI nonsense out of your life, I would highly recommend you have a look at Linux, even if you're not going to use it full time. You should at least start looking into it for more of your personal items so that you're not getting caught up in all of these client side scannings and all of these other features that are involved that you never knew you needed because you really don't. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts about these. Do you agree that this is the backdoor in to the client side scanning. Let me know your other thoughts about this down below. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a comment and I will leave you with a video on the screen here about uh, switching to um, basically installing Linux onto an external USB drive, like a flash drive or an external hard drive. So you can actually have a version of Linux without actually imp impacting your regular Windows computer in the event you need to keep that. Let me know those in the comments down below.